we were faced as a city with a major um, challenge with a ruling that came down from the Ninth Circuit Court that says that we cannot criminalize or, or penalize someone simply for being homeless. Uh, the reality is if there are not enough beds, available shelter beds in the city, uh, they can't be cited for such. And, and we certainly agree uh, from the city's perspective, we want to ensure that, uh, that we have enough beds available. And so uh, we uh, sacrificed one park, which was Beardbrook Park at that time, uh, in order to ensure that we could enforce our no camping ordinances in the rest of our parks in the city. So that's when Beardbrook Park opened at that time. Beardbrook Park was uh, an emergency situation uh, when our leadership at the city got together and decided that we needed to open up the park. Uh, we opened Beardbrook Park not knowing really what to fully expect, but we knew we had to do something fast. And so uh, we learned a lot in that process. We learned that more organization was needed, more facilitation was needed, more services were needed to uh, assist those who are experiencing homelessness there. And so uh, we moved the, uh, the, the Beardbrook Park, so to speak, over to underneath the Ninth Street Bridge. We called it the Modesto Outdoor Emergency Shelter, or MOES for short. And we stood that up uh, with more organization, more services, uh, more management uh, of connecting folks to the services that they need to hopefully break the cycle of homelessness, and more security. And so when the, uh, the shelter opened underneath the Ninth Street Bridge, we ensured that we had all of those things right away from the beginning. Uniform tents, the same uh, size tents and same size structure for each individual who was staying there. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we had the services there to support them and the security there uh, that we knew was an issue for those that were staying there. They were asking for more security, so we provided that for them there. Well, the reality is uh, we know that each homeless individual is different uh, and the size that, that folks took in terms of their belongings, bringing them to the park was an issue. Um, and so that was one of the issues that we had to overcome where when we simply allow for just anyone to come and at any size, um, we, we quickly knew that some of the homeless individuals that were coming over to the park took up uh, a large uh, facility and uh, others were left with a smaller portion of the, of the park. And we, we knew that we needed to be equitable in terms of uh, the amount of space that folks were given. And so that was one thing we learned early on was that uh, we, we want to ensure that there's some equitability there in terms of those who are staying there. Um, also, uh, we also learned about uh, the, the well-intentioned the well -intentioned folks who come to the city to help those in need, uh, we wanted to, we, we learned that there was some regulation that needed to, to take place in terms of what's brought to the homeless facility. Uh, we were at some point simply allowing for anything to be brought at any time um, and we quickly learned that that would not work because we, uh, for example, we got pallets of collard greens that were way past their deadline uh, uh, for, for what you can eat. And so um, we were not able to simply allow folks at any time to just drop stuff off and then leave. We knew that there needed to be some facilitation and organization of the donations that were brought in. And, and clearly government is not the best, it is not best suited to receive and then catalog and then equitably give those materials out to folks in need. And so we brought in some assistance uh, with third party providers who could come in and manage donations, manage things that were dropped off, and manage again those services that were being connected to folks. Well, I think with any type of situation like this where we are allowing for uh, those experiencing homelessness to to live, essentially, there's a, a certain amount of risk that we take on as a government agency for that. We, we knew that risk going into it. We felt that the risk was uh, one that we could overcome 
um, based on the need that exists in town and what we could offer these homeless individuals. Uh, so risk is certainly something that we uh, were aware of. We knew that that exists and we, we needed to overcome that. You know, there's also uh, the issue of crime, fire, and medical assistance. And that is one where we are never truly going to solve all three of those issues in terms of crime, uh, the, the risk of fire, and the risk of health concerns at a facility like this. Uh, we can mitigate it as much as possible with the services that we provide there at the outdoor shelter, uh, but we knew that that was something that was going to, uh, that we were going to get hit hard on. With the opening of Beardbrook Park, but also the Modesto Outdoor Emergency Shelter, we saw a significant reduction in the calls for service for police department and for uh, ambulatory services. And so uh, we've seen a direct correlation between uh, allowing for our homeless individuals to go into one location and the calls for service and the quality of life crimes that we would otherwise experience in other parts of the city go down. And so we have seen uh, a significant impact a positive impact in terms of, of our law enforcement and uh, calls for service. Yeah, two things. One is, practically speaking, we have committed to the Tuolumne River Regional Trust that we would close the Mose facility and restore it back to its original uh, status, which is as a park. This park is co-owned and co-facilitated, co-managed by several parties, including the city, the county, and the Tuolumne River Regional Park. And so it, it simply cannot exist as a homeless uh, shelter forever. It, there, uh, we knew that we needed to commit to the trust that it would be brought back to its original um, status as a park. And we've committed to that, we're honoring that commitment, and we're restoring it back to the park. The second thing is, we know that if we simply allow for uh, a homeless park uh, camping or unlawful camping in the park, we're not doing anything else to solve the issues related to homelessness. And so where there might be significant benefit in opening or allowing for unlawful camping at this one facility, the reality is there is much more that needs to be done to break the cycle of homelessness. And so the, the emergency shelter that was stood up under the Ninth Street Bridge is really just the first step in a housing continuum crisis that we have to solve in the county and in the city. And we're doing that with the next step and the next step. So there's other housing needs that we have in town that we're solving. And so uh, we, we have to be able to say, this is not the only answer. There is other issues that we need to solve and that we're working towards solving. The good thing is we have laws, policies, regulations in place in the state of California and in the city of Modesto uh, to combat what we would consider to be the negative impacts of vagrancy. Uh, we can certainly continue to combat that with our policies and regulations, uh, assuming, of course, that we have available beds elsewhere in the city and county, and we believe we have that. In responding to the Ninth Circuit Court ruling, which says that we cannot criminalize homeless uh, homelessness, we believe that as long as we have available beds, shelter beds, in other parts of the city and county so that you can lay your head at night in a safe, secure location, free of barriers, that we've established that and we can continue to uh, respond and enforce the regulations that we already have in place. And so now that Moe's is closing, now that Salvation Army is opening its expansion, now that other facilities around town and around the county have opened their facilities for beds and for those experiencing homelessness, our law enforcement team, who and we do have several teams in place, will be able to enforce the regulations that we have here in the city. Nowhere in the Facebook post are we criminalizing uh, homelessness. In fact, we've been making very clear since the beginning of this issue over a year ago, when we tackled this problem head on, we are not going to criminalize homelessness. But there will be accountability for the negative impacts of vagrancy-related issues in town. 
And so we do know that our residents are calling for ways that they can assist the homeless and ways that they can ensure that we're keeping their safety. And so the impetus for the post was really to ensure all residents that with Mo's closing, Salvation Army opening, with the next phase of this homelessness crisis that we're in, there will be accountability enforcement for those that simply say no to the services that we're trying to offer. We are offering a lot of services. The county and the city and our partners are working together tirelessly to ensure that every homeless individual has the opportunity to get the services that they need to break homelessness and to rebuild their lives. If, if those individuals say no to those services and refuse them, then they will experience the law enforcement arm that we have here in town set up to ensure the safety of all.